One thing for sure, Medicare can be confusing. It turns out to be complicated for most people because we haven't had to make these kinds of decisions and choices before. When we start Medicare, all of a sudden we need to figure out a whole bunch of things to make sure that we make the right choices. And I deal with this every day, all day, and it can be confusing for me at times. So I'm gonna go through some of the bigger mistakes that I see with people when they're coming into Medicare. And I'm Keith Armbrecht, founder of Medicare on Video. I help people across the country make the right Medicare choices. I can absolutely help you as well. Make sure to take advantage of all my information on my website, medicareonvideo.com. Everything is free. You can download my book, Making Medicare Easy. There's lots of information all in one place, which makes it easier to get things done. So just make sure you take a look there and you'll find everything that you need. Right now, I'm gonna go through some of the bigger mistakes that I see with people coming into Medicare. Number one, right off the bat, is not starting your Medicare Part B. So Medicare Part B, as in boy, is a foundation of Medicare. It's one of the kind of pillars, the A and the B. And a lot of times people don't realize that they need to actually start Medicare Part B and that it's something that you have to do yourself. So when you're coming into Medicare, if you're already drawing Social Security, so if you started taking Social Security at 62, 63, whatever it may be, your A and B should start automatically when you turn 65. However, I would absolutely suggest that you verify that. But if you are not drawing Social Security, you need to start your Medicare Part A and your Medicare Part B. It's not hard to do. Now, the question is, are you still working at age 65? Because if you work past age 65 and you have insurance at work, you may not need to start your Medicare Part B. You wanna do that when you're going to retire and come into Medicare. But either way, when you're going to come into Medicare, you need to start your Medicare Part B. And sometimes people neglect to do that. And it can be very problematic down the road. So I make it easy for you to find the place to do that. I made a URL. It's www.startpartb.com. Takes you right to the page on Social Security. I have a whole video on exactly how to do that. Make sure you watch that video. I'll put the link below this video down in the description so you can click on that if you're ready to start Medicare. Walks you right through the process on how to do that. Now, in relation to that, another problem that I see is people starting their Part B before they should. And that goes back to whether you're going to continue to work. So if you're gonna to continue to work and your employer has more than 20 employees and you have a good group health plan at work, your employer is probably paying for most of that cost, then you probably wanna keep that group health plan until you're going to retire and come into Medicare. If you are going to do that, you do not need to start Part A or Part B, especially Part B. Part B has a premium to it. You don't wanna be paying that premium. And in addition to that, it takes away some rights that you have when you come into Medicare later. So if you're going to stay at work, you're going to have your group health plan at work, you do not wanna start your Part B. You probably don't wanna start your Part A. If you start your Part A, then you can also no longer contribute to a health savings account at work. That's a whole kind of different story. But generally, if you're gonna stay on your group health insurance at work, you don't need to start Medicare Part A or Part B. That's a big mistake that I see quite often. So make sure you understand that and, and give us a call. We can explain things, walk things through for you. Make sure that we set your timeline exactly the way it should be. And that brings me right into the next mistake that I see all the time is missing your enrollment period. There are different enrollment periods coming into Medicare. The big one is generally turning age 65. There's a window that you need to get things done. But generally, if you're going to come in when you turn 65, Medicare is gonna start on the first of the month of the month that you turn 65. So if you're born on June 28th, Medicare is gonna start on June 1st. That throws people for a loop right off the bat. But you need to get everything set up and done early, a couple months before that, so you don't have any stress and problems when you come in. If you go past June 1st in that scenario, it's a problem. Even though you don't turn 65 till later in the month, it's complicated and just makes things much harder. So make sure you understand your enrollment periods. I certainly have videos on all that stuff as well. Make sure you visit my YouTube page. It's keithsvideos.com. 
You can search right on the page for any topic that you want. I got a video on just about everything related to Medicare. It just makes you get in the right position so that we get it right from the start. That's exactly what we want to do. Now, something else that I think is very problematic, when you come into Medicare, you have big choices to make. Really, the one major choice is do you stay on original Medicare A and B with a Medicare supplement plan, which I always recommend, or do you choose to go into a Medicare Advantage plan, which is run by a private insurance company in a for-profit format where you have networks of doctors and hospitals, and it's just not something that I would do myself, so I would never recommend a Medicare Advantage plan. And something that I see as a problem is people getting sold into Medicare Advantage plans. Almost all the TV commercials that you see, all the phone calls that you're gonna receive, all the mail that you can get in your mailbox is from Medicare Advantage plans. So first ask yourself, my goodness, why are they doing so much marketing? So they do a tremendous amount of marketing because Again, it's a for-profit and a big for-profit for the private insurance companies to have you come into their Medicare Advantage plan. So they are, they are sending direct mail, they are telemarketing, they are on TV, they are doing everything they can to get you to come into their Medicare Advantage plan. With original Medicare, with a Medicare supplement plan, you see very little marketing. You see, I mean, I'm kind of marketing here, but it's more educational, showing you exactly the way it should be. But Original Medicare with a supplement is just fantastic health insurance. You won't find anything easier or better for when you're gonna need it down the road. You don't have to ask for permission. You don't have to get referrals. You don't need pre-authorizations. You don't have networks of doctors and hospitals. You pretty much go to the doctor and if it's something you need that's medically necessary, that's it. So that is why I would always want the control, flexibility, freedom of Original Medicare with a supplement as opposed to going into a for-profit Medicare Advantage plan. So be careful when you're doing your due diligence and make sure you understand exactly what you're looking at. A lot of times people think that the Medicare Advantage is a Medicare supplement. So it's very confusing to understand exactly what you're looking to do. Another problem that I see is people thinking that Medicare is free. And it's unfortunately not free. It's not terribly expensive, but it's not free. We go back to the original Medicare A and B. Medicare Part B has a premium. Medicare A does not have a premium. B right now is about $170 a month. Generally goes up a few dollars every year. So it is an expense that you're going to have. Now, whether you choose to stay with original Medicare or go on a Medicare Advantage plan, you're still going to have that Medicare Part B premium. And then there are some out-of-pocket expenses that go along with it. So out-of-pocket generally is more expensive on a Medicare Advantage plan than if you stay on an original Medicare with a Medicare supplement plan. So there are certainly some things you need to understand about the out-of-pocket costs. And again, I have videos on all this stuff. Feel free to go through my library and educate yourself. We're happy to talk about it if you wanna talk about it, but you'll find everything you need right on my YouTube channel. And then we'll send you a quote. If you go to MedicareOnVideo.com, fill out the basic form, we'll email you a quote of a Medicare supplement plan, either plan G or plan N in your zip code, and you'll understand exactly how much that costs. So you know exactly where you stand and what your expenses are gonna be, because we don't want any surprises. We wanna make sure we get this right and that we know what we're doing when it comes time to utilize our health insurance. Something else that I find that people kind of have trouble with is with a Medicare supplement plan. So if you're on original Medicare A and B and you're gonna get a supplement plan, People think they're too expensive or they can't afford it. And without actually looking to see exactly what they cost, we try to get a supplement plan somewhere around $100 a month, sometimes less than that, sometimes a lot less than that. But there are different options between G, N, or plan GHD. And depending upon where you live, we wanna fit that right into that $100 or less type model just to make it affordable. Now, some people can afford more and have stronger coverage. And again, what it just depends what makes sense, where you live and what your, your comfort level is. So we will do what we can to make sure everything's affordable, but don't assume right off the bat that it's not affordable because most of the time it's much less expensive, especially when you utilize it, than the other option on the Medicare Advantage plan with a much higher max out-of-pocket cost when it comes time to use it. And then the last mistake that I will address is shopping your plan every year. 
So if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan or on a Medicare supplement plan, the problem with Medicare Advantage plans is they change every year. They're going to have changes in doctors and hospitals and benefits. And you absolutely have to shop your Medicare Advantage plan to make sure it's still the right plan if that is what you have chosen to do. With a Medicare supplement plan, they don't change. Their, their benefits stay the same. A G is a G, an N is an N, and they don't change. What can change is the cost. They can have a rate increase each year. And the good thing about a supplement plan is the benefits are exactly the same. So we can shop very easily and stay with the same plan at a lower cost carrier. And I have a website specific to that to make it easy for you to know exactly if you're in the right plan every year. You just go to medicarepricecheck.com, put in your information, we'll do the comparison. If it makes sense to change, if we can save $20 a month or $30 a month for the exact same coverage, then that's exactly what we want to do. And we'll take care of everything. It's very easy to do. It's really not complicated at all. So those are some of the mistakes that I see, and certainly there are some others out there, but feel free to utilize all my information. I hope you found this helpful. Now make sure you also take a look at this video because this video will help you as well. It gets you exactly where you need to be. There's lots of things that you need to understand and we do everything we can to make sure that we get all your pieces put in the right places. Hope you found this video helpful. Have a fantastic day.